welcome to the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame virtual ceremony for the class of 2021. Hello, my name is Beth Udovan. I'm a member of the Executive Committee and have been for seven years. Today we will have two sessions of our ceremony to enable people from different parts of the world to be able to participate in our ceremony. By having these two ceremonies at two different times, we hope everyone who wants to can participate. All of our introductions and speeches have been pre-recorded, so the ceremony should go very smoothly. I'm Schaff immortalizes the achievements and contributions of those who have distinguished themselves in our sport of open water swimming. Open water swimming is defined as anything swum from 10K to beyond what we can imagine. We also honor the contributors to our sport, which include administrators, coaches, pilots, crew, and organizations. Today, we're going to induct seven worthy individuals and one organization, as well as two awards from the International Swimming Hall of Fame and our own Dale Petronich Award for service to Imshoff. Since 1963, we have inducted over 300 worthy individuals and contributors to our organization. The International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame is run by unpaid volunteers. We are under the umbrella of the International Swimming Hall of Fame located in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. They do our tax and legal affairs, host us in their museum in Fort Lauderdale, and much more. All our donations that we receive from you go 100% to these expenses and our annual ceremonies. For you non-English speakers, we thank you for your patience and understanding tonight. Both our ceremony booklet and our website have translations of most of our biographies. Also, our new nomination form has been structured to make it easier for nominations for those not comfortable with the English language. Once again, thank you for joining us today, tonight, this morning, whatever time it is in your part of the world. This is a very special occasion for our honorees and award winners, their families and friends. Now, on with the ceremony. Thank you. My name is Richard Boer. I'm honorary administrator from the Netherlands and on the executive committee since 2017. Please let me explain the agenda and the logistics of today's virtual conference. This ceremony is at the end of a long process managed by honoree Melissa Cunningham on the executive board and she is election chair. She started this class of 2000. 21 in the process of fall 2019 after the international marathon swimming hall of fame announced the class of 2020 with its inductees and the award winners we started to elect collect nominations for the class of 2021 please see our website at imshaft.org and use the nominations tab please remember that anyone including you can nominate Nominations were reviewed, edited, checked for accuracy and quality and submitted by ballot in the fall of 2020 to the selection committee of 60 individuals. The selection committee members live in more than 20 countries. 11 are either with disabilities or assisted swimmers with the disabilities. Five are Olympians, 18 won one or more majors, 29 swam the English Channel, Five are dual inductees in the International Swimming Hall of Fame, those who have the red sashes. Twelve are David's Wheeler Award winners, 
43 previously attended in person the induction and ceremonies of the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame. Inductees and winners were announced in late 2020. The ceremony you will now see is a series of introductions and acceptances. Honorees generally with close connection will introduce the inductees and award winners by giving an overview of their career. Each inductee will then accept, often citing a few career memories and thanking others who may have assisted them in their careers. All will have their certificates and awards and class of 2021 inductees will wear their green sash. Further details on all the inductees and award winners can be found on the booklet and on our website. Now, let's go on with the inductions. Swimming friends, this video is to congratulate the organization Capri Napoli for the induction in the Hall of Fame. It's not only uh, Hall of Fame, it's not only the to best to be the best competition in the world, it's also a matter of it's a heart. Capri Napoli was all the time present in our mind. For that Luciano Cotena, congratulations. Keep working. My name is Daniel Shazli. Uh, I am a marathon swimmer. I start my international swims uh, in Capri Naples. It was the first international swim for me. Uh, 1961. Uh, 1961, I got first place for the amateurs, second for the professionals. Uh, 1962, it was the first, second year before me. Uh, I won first place for all professionals and uh, amateurs. I set a new record for uh, that swim at that time. It was eight hours and four minutes. Uh, and it was an incredible uh, time in that time. Uh, this this uh, record was not breaking for 10 years. I, I compete also in 1963, 1964, 1965. So five years in uh, uh, in Capri Naples, it was the, the, the world champion that time, he called Capri Naples the world championship. So I'm very proud to win that uh, race. Hello, I'm Pilar Geico from Argentina. I have won the Marathon Capri Napoli in two opportunities. Uh, today I want to give you my congratulations for your induction in the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame Class 2021. I'm so happy for this. You deserve this as an organization because it's a great organization with a lot of effort, love and passion. So I'm so happy for this and enjoy it. Bye. Hi, this is Paul Asmuth from California. Just want to say congratulations to the Capri Napoli organization for their induction into the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame. What a well-deserved honor. And I'm so glad that I've had the opportunity to race there many times and I look forward to seeing everyone there again in the future someday and to many more years of success. Congratulations. Hi, it's Trent Grimsey, winner of Capri to Napoli Marathon Swim in 2012. I just want to congratulate the organization for being inducted into the Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame, class 2021. Well done. Hola, soy Esther Núñez Morera. He ganado la Capri Napoli en el 2012 y he nadado por 11 veces esta carrera. Felicito a la Capri Napoli y a Luciano Cotena por la inducción al Hall of Fame. Muchas felicidades y espero sigan por ese camino. Hi, I'm Damian Blaun from Argentina. I won Capri Napoli Marathon in 2010 and 2015 and participated in that race for more than 15 times. And I want to congratulate to Luciano Cotena and all the organizing committee of the, for me, the best race in the world. It's always a great pleasure to participate and to feel like at home. Luciano, 
congratulations and keep going like this for the future of the race and the future of the marathon swimming. This is Monique Wiltschut from the Netherlands and I was a winner in your race Capri Napoli in 86 and I think in 89 female winner and I really really enjoyed to race from Capri to Napoli and uh, I'm, I'm very happy for you uh, that you are now going to be inducted in the International Swimming Hall of Fame and uh, it's a big honor but you deserve it because I always really enjoyed to be in, in Italy and to swim that race and uh, beat uh, most of the men not all of them but most of them so uh, very good thank you very much for having me in those years and um, you deserve it Master El Shazdi from Egypt I would like to thanks all organizers from Capri Naples for the big effort they had done since 1954 until 2021 and on the same time I would like to say congratulations to be honored in the Hall of Fame thank you very much and wish to see you next year in Capri Naples thank you Hello, my fellow marathoners, especially all of you who have either won or even swum across the Bay of Naples. You probably know me, uh, Diana Nyad from the United States in the 70s when I was on the marathon circuit uh, with all those wonderful um, characters uh, swimming in Argentina and Canada and uh, many beautiful places in the world. By far, by far, not even close. My favorite swim, the swim that was closest to my heart back then, was the Capri to Napoli swim. In part, it was just the grand history. You know, right, right in the center of Western Europe, we'd get there early, a bunch of us, and we'd train swimming in, in and out of the majestic blue grotto. It doesn't get better than that. Then you arrive on the other side, and the warmth and the passion and the emotion of the Italian people when we'd get out and they'd carry us around on their shoulders. It was just a, it's a, it's a wonderful memory, even though it was all those years ago. Congratulations to all of you who have ever made your way across the Bay of Naples. Dear friends, dear colleagues, allow me to have this opportunity to congratulate the organizing committee of Capri Napoli Swimming Marathon, one of the greatest swim in the world, one of the most prestigious marathon swimming in the world, with their induction in the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame, class 2021. And you will agree with me that uh, the team of Mr. Uciano Kotena did his best the last decades to keep this event alive, to keep this event in our calendar. And personally, I would like to thank for giving me chance to be part of the history, to giving me chance to be part of this prestigious swim. Thank you very much. My name is Martina Grimaldi, Honor Swimmer 2018. I still remember the excitement and satisfaction when I won uh, the um, 2013 uh, edition, establishing the new competition record. Uh, it seemed uh, that Naples was um, there um, to celebrate um, with me uh, my victory. The sun was shining, uh, so many kisses and warm hugs. Uh, joy um, my, uh, in my heart and uh, fatigue suddenly disappeared. Uh, therefore, uh, congratulations to Capri Napoli Marathon Organization uh, to being inducted into the International Swimming Hall of Fame Class uh, 2021 as Honor Organization. Dear friends, I am really proud of the entry of the race Capri Napoli into the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame. I had the honor of reviving this historical race in 2003 and be the president of the organizing committee for 19 editions. The Capri Napoli Marathon is one of the oldest marathons in the world, a race of those considered major, which has made the history of uh, open water in the world, from the first edition in 1954 up to 1992 for uh, 37 editions. Well before FINA recognized the open water, the Capri Napoli Marathon, together with other major, it already created a professional world circuit awarding long-distance world titles. 
then a 10 years break and a new start in 2003. In this period, uh, the open water has changed, less pioneering and more uh, structured sport. And the Capi Napoli Marathon has adapted to this new reality. Thanks to the work carried out in the recent years, the competition has reached a total of 56 editions, one of the longest running in the world, and it is annually part of the FINA Ultramarathon circuit. Even in the last two years, when the world had to stop for the pandemic, we did not stop the event, and we had two editions full of emotions. Many of the hymns of honorees have swum in the Gulf of Naples, and participation of victory in this water have uh, sometimes determined the course of an entire career. Every long distance swimmer uh, has the dream of participating in the Capri Napoli Marathon. Yesterday as today, amateur as professional. Day by day, with hard work, we let that dream come true. And uh, we will continue to do it in the future. Thank you. Hello, my name is Christoph Wandrat from Germany and I want to welcome Gabriel Chayou from Argentina to the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame. It's an honor to me to introduce Gabriel Chayou. We did a lot of competitions, especially in the 90s, all over the world. We had races in Argentina, in Canada, United States and Italy. And we had always a very great time, especially when we were competing together in Argentina. It was a pleasure for me to spend the time with him, not only during the race, especially also after the competitions. We had a big asado. He showed me the beautiful country and we had always a lot of fun together. Also when we were traveling in the United States or in Canada around the competitions, always it was always funny. And in the time we spent together in Italy, we did some beautiful training camps together in Cefalu in the Hotel Calura. There we had also good races for over four days nonstop. We had competitions between 50 meters and 10 kilometers. There were always very close decisions and Gabriel was always a very, very fair sportsman in the race and outside. We spoke about our experiences and had great time. We had fun during parties and I hope I will meet him again in some competitions now not in warm water especially in the cold water in the ice water i'm really proud to meet a guy like gabriel chayou and it's a pleasure for me to introduce him in the marathon swimming hall of fame i wish you good luck for the future and for everything what you are doing La natación forma parte de mi vida. Actualmente soy entrenador del Club Atlantis de Mar del Plata en Argentina. Gracias a este deporte pude conocer nuevos países, nuevas culturas y sobre todo hacer muy buenos amigos por el mundo. También conocí a mi esposa Karina Nissenhol, que también me acompañaba durante las competencias junto con mi amigo Alexis Pagliuca. Con ella hace más de 30 años Estamos juntos y tenemos dos hermosos hijos que son Matías y Sofía, que se dedican actualmente a la natación. Quiero agradecer a mis entrenadores por la dedicación, el tiempo y la sabiduría que aplicaron en mí para que yo llegara tan lejos en las aguas abiertas. Ellos son Patricio Maserati, Luis Policarpo, Juan Arsenio y Torrado Rossi. Finalmente, quiero agradecer al Comité del Hall de la Fama por este premio que se lo dedico a toda mi familia. Gracias. Hello to everyone. 
Um, my name is Laura Gutierrez, the president of the Strait of Gibraltar Swimming Association, Honor Organization Class of 2017. It's my honor to introduce Julian Gritchlow from Great Britain to be inducted into the International uh, Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame, Class of 2021, as an honor contributor. When our association started in 1999, my father, Rafael, led the team spending years researching the history of the swim. Going back before honor swimmer Mercedes Glades first confirmed crossing in 1928. We wanted, needed to assemble the history of the successful swims, names, dates and times. This involved media searches in Spain and Gibraltar, oral histories and contacting swimmers and pilots. We needed to make an adjustment on which claims credible or not and classify swims as skins or neoprene. This put us in a great position to introduce Julian Gritchlow. In 2004, after the first of his four English Channel solo swims, Julian foolishly asked what number was I in swimming the channel? At the time, there was no consolidate list, so there was no answer to his question. I don't suspect that he had any idea that this simple question would lead him to become becoming the world experts on successful English channel solo swims. For the last 18 years, Julian has researched nearly 150 years of records and try to reach, reach out to every living solower to confirm details. In some cases there are dis disputes and the records are not definitive. Julian then became the arbiter of truth and left the titled records if future historians try to delve deeper. His consolidated database is important because the English Channel generates the most publicity for the sports and this database is an, a crucial element in giving swimmers, writers, a factual basis for tens of thousands of future studies. Now that the database is available, Julian can answer this question. He was the swimmer 738. He has also started to generate even more metrics. These metrics will of course change with the every future attempt and succeed. Julian has given back to the sport in other ways. He raised nearly $250,000 for the charity and served as a vice chairman of Honor Organization, the Channel Swimming Piloting Federation. Thank you for your great work and sending the history. Now, welcome Julian Gritchlow from Great Britain as an honor contributor class of 2021 into the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame. Thank you, Lara, for your kind words of introduction. It is a tremendous honour to be recognised by the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame, a community that comprises absolutely all of my swimming heroes. And what a unique community it is. In 2004, when I rocked up in Dover Harbour on May the 1st, a naive, aspiring channel swimmer, I was welcomed with open arms by swimming greats such as Frida Streeter, Kevin Murphy and Alison Streeter, who also coincidentally thawed me out after my first swim with hot tea and toast in her Dover flat. Here was a community of people whose only aim in life was to help swimmers achieve their dreams, and not for huge financial returns, but just for the love of seeing people succeed. I truly found my tribe. From those early days, I wanted to pay it forward and make my contribution. And as Alara outlined, the simple question of how many individuals have swum the channel before me set me on an 18 year mission to build the most comprehensive database of solo English Channel swims with the help of, but independent of, the CSMPF and CSA. Along this journey, I've had the opportunity to interact with great archivists and administrators like Ned Denison, Evan Morrison and Stephen Munnantones, as well as the Dover Museum crew of Joe Smith and Mark Frost, and thousands of channel swimmers, including Alison and Kevin, as well as Sarah Thomas, Chloe McArdle, Trent Grimsey and Jackie Coble. 
as well as many swimmers for whom a single solo English Channel swim is the start and end of their swimming careers. Through swimmers' memories and archives, we have corrected many inaccuracies in the official records and filled in countless gaps. We've also busted a wide range of myths, like whether it is easier to swim from France to England or to swim on a neap tide. When Trudy Edderley made became the sixth person and the first woman to swim the English Channel, smashing the speed record by nearly two hours, certain newspapers wrote that it wasn't possible and that you must have cheated. In a world of alternative facts, observers and administrators are critical to promote fair play and robust records. Trudy's swim was inspirational like Matthew Webb's before her and inspired countless generations of women to follow her lead. And I'm proud that as a result, our sport is truly international and inclusive, with inspirational female swimmers like Alison Streeter, who's held the record for most solo swims, 43, for 21 years. Or like Sarah Thomas, who achieved a four-way channel swim in 2019. Or like Jackie Coble, who holds the record for the longest journey, uh, one way, in 28 hours, 44 minutes. This year, my own daughter, Phoebe, had her 16th birthday. And so did her first channel relay with Sanko Swim in 16 hours, 47 minutes. Whilst preparing for this swim, I was shocked to find that of the 9,000 odd relay swimmers, only around a third are named in the public records. So I've started another journey to build the comprehensive database of all English Channel relays. And already we've managed to find the names of nearly half of all swimmers. I suspect this journey will take the next 18 years to complete, but will also help answer new questions like, how many days is the English Channel swimmable by a relay or a solo swimmer? And how long are typical weather windows? I'm enormously grateful to the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame for inducting me as an honour administrator, and I hope that I will be able to continue for many years to come to answer all the broad range of questions from swimmers around the world about the English Channel. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I am Damian Blaum, Honor Swimmer Class 2020, and I am here to introduce Stefan Gomez from France as Honor Swimmer 2021. I remember as if it were yesterday when I crashed with Stefan during a training before the World Cup in Cancun in 2003. Fortunately, this story finished well, and he finished second, and I was just behind him third. We have become very good friends. We share trainings. He has gener generously taught me everything I needed to know to be able to compete for many years on the world circuit. But more importantly, he has made me part of his family. First, by giving me his friendship. And then together with his beloved Margot, the possibility of being Esteban's godfather, his first child. Our families are close friends and have been united thanks to open water swimming and Stefan has become the godfather of Gala, my daughter. Stefan, as a swimmer, has been four times runner-up of the FINA World Tour and he has won several major races during his career. He won two times at Santa Fe Coronda, 2004 and 2005, Rosario in 2004, Atlantic City Marathon Swim in 2004, Capri Napoli in 2008, and Hernandarias Paraná, 88 kilometers, the longest race in the world in 2006. He has been medalist in Europeans and World Championships over the distance of 25 kilometers, and he remained among the best swimmers in the world of the speci speciality for more than 15 years being a protagonist in each race in which he had been taking part. But his best, his best legacy was not only these results. His best legacy is being an honest, hardworking, friendly person, an incredible father and godfather who is always by our side when we need him. Stefan Gomez, welcome to the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame.
Hello, I would like to thank uh, Damien for this message. Thank you, Damien, for uh, everything. It's an honor for me um, to be part in the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame. Many friends are represented there, uh, like uh, Stéphane Leca, Damien Blom, uh, Jacques Touzé. Uh, open water has been very important for me during um, 15 years of my life. Uh, it gave me a lot of things uh, that uh, still serve me today. Um, open water is uh, like life, you know. Uh, swimming 88 kilometers in the river, like in Argentina. Uh, sometimes you swim good, sometimes you swim bad. It's like life, you know. Sometimes you are good and sometimes... Um, is more difficult, but you, you never stop like a swimmer in the, in the river, you know. Um, uh, the best race for me, uh, uh, the race like Argentina, uh, Canada, Capri Napoli, and for sure the World Championships with the second place in, in Fukuoka uh, on the 25k. And um, with Stefan was a third place, two, two French swimmers in the podium for, for the World Championships is a, it's a history for the French Federation. Um, I have a lot of uh, uh, things uh, with open water, and the, the most beautiful thing that uh, open water uh, give me, uh, for sure, are uh, my friends, friends uh, swimmer like Damien Blom, like uh, a lot of swimmer, you know, and it's like a, a family. And um, I would like um, uh, to thank all the people who help me. Uh, during this period, during 15 years, uh, open water, my coach, uh, uh, the first coach, Yves Lopez, and the um, other coach like um, Frédéric Barral and Lucien Lacoste uh, in Toulouse, uh, um, my, my team uh, in um, in Saint Africa, my my, my uh, club, uh, and the other club, and and the end of my career. I would like uh, also like uh, to thank uh, the French Federation and uh, all the people who work there and who uh, allow swimmers to, to florist. Uh, thank you to my family, to my uh, partner Margot, who has always been present. Uh, thanks uh, to uh, International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame for their work. And thank you to uh, uh, all the organization uh, for race. Um, uh, in the world, like uh, Canada, Argentina, Capri Napoli, and other organizations, because it's very important for the swimmers, and the, it's, a, it's a big, big family. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I hope see you um, next time, and um, goodbye. Ciao. from the United States of America. I'm an honor swimmer and an honor coach. It is my sincere honor to introduce Yvette Havelkova from Czechoslovakia yeah. to be inducted into the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame, class of 2021. Yvette had three exceptional English Channel crossings starting in 2005 842, 753, and 725, the latter being swim in 2006 as the fastest of all time for a female. No one, male or female, has three swims this fast. She was a unique channel swimmer and deserves the honor being bestowed on her. Pure marathon swimmers train years to cross the English Channel once but to return two other times and swim faster is remarkable. Yvette is just under six foot five inches tall. I stand at five foot two inches tall. To look in her eyes, I would have to stand on a step stool. I would like to do this, Yvette, to say congratulations for being my, breaking my world record by 15 minutes. It was meant to be broken by you. You fought hard for it, and I'm proud it's yours, 
and will be for decades. Etta started swimming at the age of six. She excelled in freestyle, butterfly, and the I am in the pool. At 18, Yvetta competed in her first open water swim, a 25 kilometer race and finished seventh. For the next 15 years, Yvetta be became a 20 time open water champion in Czechoslovakia, Croatia, Egypt, South America, and various European championships. In the latter, she earned a silver medal in the five kilometer race in 1991 and was a bronze medalist in the 25 kilometer race in 1995, besides winning a World Cup in the 10 kilometer race in 2002. She competed in at least 11 other World Cups and various other long distance races from 10 kilometers to 142.2 kilometers in length. In 2007, Yvetta organized and swam 138.7 kilometers for seven days to raise money for an orphanage in Prague. In 2008, she returned to Prague, organizing a swim to raise money for the Asante Kenya Children's Charity. This time she swam upstream for 142.2 kilometers in seven days, quite unbelievable. Her phenomenal swimming career ended in 2008, but she didn't stop there. In 2009, she wrote her autobiography, Rebelka, in English, This is Rebellious. Yvette is married to Thomas and has two young sons. They live in Spain half the year and the rest of the year in Switzerland. This introduction has been one of my greatest honors to welcome Yvette Havakova from Czechoslovakia as an honor swimmer, class of 2021 in the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame. I greet you very much. Thank you very much for your nomination. I can only say thank you. There is no more. Thank you and thank you again. I wish you all the best. Bye. Your Iveta. My name is Ricardo Rato, and I'm an honor contributor and administrator of the class of 2017 of the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame. Tonight, I have the pleasure to introduce you Neville Smith, a South African coach and Finn official. I met Neville for the first time in 2007 at Melbourne, Australia, at the occasion of the 12th FINA World Championships that took place from March 17th to April the 1st. I have memorable feelings uh, about these World Championships as we faced together some hard situations as the day of the 25k race when the race had to be stopped due to bad weather conditions that could jeopardize the safety of the swimmers, officials and, and coaches as well. During those hard moments, Neville could demonstrate great control and strong attitude, contributing to keep, to keep the whole uh, uh, officials, coaches and everybody calm and under control. While he developed his hold at his appointed position, he could dictate the tune. One year later, we met again in Seville, Spain, for the FINA uh, Olympic Marathon Swimming Trials that took place in, in Guadalquivir River that I showed as a, a nice, very, very nice venue and everything this turn 
went smooth. Uh, uh, this situation could allow us to go out for dinner, to visit some nice spots as the Roman ruins, as well as watch a bullfight. We had a memorable and wonderful time in Seville. As a coach, Neville develops great swimming programs that enroll thousands of swimmers, and he can develop these swimmers at national and international level, as well as open water swimmers, including his son. The hardest situation was when we got a phone call from South Africa while in Melbourne, uh, informing that his son, Kenneth Smith, had passed. What a news for a father far away from home. Our enorm enormous responsibility to officiate the World Championships. At that moment, Bill Ford, Neville and me, we were together at the bar in the lobby of our hotel. That terrible information was received by him and I can't imagine how he could deal with that. For his personality, emotional balance, passion and strong desire to serve at the highest standards and for his accomplishments as a coach and field official, Neville Smith is being tonight inducted into the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame. Welcome Neville. Thank you, Ricardo, for those kind words. Such a privilege to have the enduring friendship and fond memories from all those years gone by. It's truly an honor to be introduced for my induction into the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame as an honor administrator in the class of 2021 by you, my friend. Thank you. I'm humbled and honored that the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame executive, Steve, Ned, Melissa, and Beth have seen fit to bestow this award on me. All of this would not have been possible without the persistence of Chris. Thank you, sir. While I accept and acknowledge this induction, it would not have been possible without the support that the Open Water Swimming Fraternity, both domestically and internationally, has shown to me to enable me to live and work my passion. The support I've enjoyed over the years from Swimming South Africa has been immense and is greatly appreciated. Having been involved in swimming now for close to 40 years as a parent, coach, administrator, technical official and event organizer, I've been privileged to have traveled the world extensively over the past 20 years, initially as a team coach and manager, and then as a technical official and event technical director. This has allowed me to bring back a multitude of ideas, expertise and experiences, and implement them where deemed fit. The openness and information sharing that I've encountered from coaches, technical officials, and event organizers alike over the years has provided me with a vast insight to this wonderful discipline that continues to positively evolve. This has resulted in numerous friendships being forged, which still endure today. The support of my family has been amazing. To my lovely wife, Anne-Marie, thank you. You are truly a blessing in my life. In ending, I would like to express my gratitude to the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame and the Open Water Swimming Fraternity for this amazing award. I'm truly humbled and honored. Thank you. My name is Edith van Dijk from the Netherlands. I'm an honor swimmer class of 2007. It's my honor to introduce Viola Valley from Italy to be induced in the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame class of 2021 as an honor swimmer. Viola and I competed together in several events. She was a very strong competitor, a swimmer with a lot of strength, endurance and speed. 
I remember the battles we swam together at the European Championships in Potsdam in 2002 on the 5 km and 10 km, both of the races being decided in the final sprint. In 2001 in Fukuoka at the 25 km World Championships race, we literally swam together for several hours, side by side, ahead of all the other swimmers, battling stroke by stroke in the waves of the ocean. During a five-year international career, Viola won two majors, the World Championships 25 km in 2001 in Fukuoka and the World Championships 10 km in 2003 in Barcelona. Besides these gold medals, she also won a silver medal in 2002 World Championships in Sharm el Sheikh, Egypt, in the 10 km and silver on the 25 km World Championships in Honolulu in 2000. She competed in five elite marathon swimming races in four years. Those were four World Championships, open water swimming and one FINA World Cup. In all of these events, she was taking the first or second place. Viola swam in three European Championships, resulting in a silver medal on the 5K in 1999 in Istanbul, and in 2000 in Potsdam, she won a gold medal on the 5K and a bronze medal on the 10K. She received the Cavaliere Ordine al Merito della Repubblica Italiana in 2003 from the Italian government. And for those who don't speak Italian, just like me, that's a Knight Order of Merit of the Italian Republic. Viola won the World Championships five kilometers three years in a row, in 2001 in Fukuoka, in 2002 in Sharm el Sheikh in Egypt, and in 2003 in Barcelona, Spain. In 2000, she won a bronze medal of 5K at the World Championships in Honolulu. She also won an additional four more World Championships medals in team events on the different World Championships. I now welcome Viola Valli from Italy as an honor swimmer, class of 2021, into the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame. Mi presento, sono Viola Valli, ho militato nella nazionale di nuoto per una decina di anni. E il nuoto di piscina è stato abbandonato dopo un po' per passare al nuoto di fondo. E il nuoto in acqua libera è uno sport stupendo e le maratone sono una palestra di vita. Il, sono onorata di aver ricevuto questo premio, eh, classe 2021 della Hall of Fame, e ne approfitto per ringraziare colui che invece l'ha ricevuto nel 2020, che è il commissario tecnico della Nazionale, eh, Massimo Giuliani. E Massimo, con la sua passione e la sua professionalità, mi ha insegnato tantissimo e mi ha permesso di arrivare alla, ai risultati. Eh, in più io ho messo veramente tanta tanta volontà, tanti allenamenti durissimi, e tutto ciò mi ha dato poi gli strumenti per poter vivere ora anche nei momenti di difficoltà. Eh, il, il premio che ho ricevuto mi dà tantissima soddisfazione a me e a tutta la mia famiglia, agli amici e è veramente il coronamento di una bellissima carriera. Il, il, nuoto, il nuoto di fondo eh, in acque libere è uno sport a contatto con la natura che ti permette di girare il mondo, di conoscere tante persone e tra queste vorrei ringraziare la mia avversaria stupenda, fortissima e anche molto molto corretta in acqua eh, che Edith, Edith Van Dijk che mi ha presentato e l'ha fatto veramente molto bene e sono felice di questo e, niente ringrazio tutto il movimento tutti quelli che mi hanno aiutato e grazie ancora per il premio che mi è stato assegnato Greetings to all. I'm Sid Cassidy and I'm honored to be an esteemed member of this Hall of Fame. I was an honor administrator back in 2005 and I also won the 
David's Captain Roger Wheeler Memorial Award in 2020. So I'm, I'm well invested with you all. And I'm honored to be here today to introduce you to one of the newest members of our class, Mr. Ronnie Manchu Wong. BBS JP from Hong Kong, we know him as Ronnie, our fearless leader of the toes. Ronnie has been uh, picked to be an honor administrator in this year 2021 class. And Ronnie, I've known for, oh, it's 30 plus years. I remember him as a swimmer going across Hong Kong Bay. And, there, and then having the honor to come back as a TOES member and visit Repulse Bay. And what he did was incredible. He, he, he led Asian open water decade after decade. And he's an unsung hero for getting us into the Olympic Games. Without Ronnie's leadership, we would be nowhere near where. I, I dropped Ronnie's name when I visited Wuhan. We were the first Americans to go to that part of China. And this was in the year 2000 with Erica Rose and, and John Flanagan. And I would say the name Ronnie Wong and people immediately opened their doors. They, they knew Ronnie from all the leadership. That race is where I got to talk to an IOC member because Ronnie, you gave me the intro. And we talked about getting this event into the Olympics. You were a big, big part of that. I know that uh, I was chairman a little bit um, there right through the Beijing Olympic Games. And in 2009, when I stepped down, Ronnie Wong took over. And he has done an unbelievable job as our leader. He's the guy. I, I, I always can count on Ronnie because he's the most calming. His presence just leads us all to, I've seen him just, just with his attitude and leadership calm down immediately, it starts to get a lot out of control. Or on the other hand, use his firm voice against, uh, you know, with some organizing committees. I've been honored to sit in those meetings as well. He's been a very able leader and been great right to this day as, as our chair. Um, the, the Asia cluster started in 2001. Ronnie Wong made that work. And this was of the utmost importance because we had to show the 10K marathon swim was all over the world. Ronnie quietly did that. He's done so much else. I remember him running the world short course on the side, plus his whole work as a leader as a businessman in the community, the way he gives back, and as a family man. He's, he's incredible. He first represented Hong Kong in the Olympics in 1968 at age 16, and then four years again in Munich did the same. And he's competed in nearly every open water event Hong Kong's ever had. You know, his, his leadership over the years that he's been our chairman has had him visit over 30 countries and 50 cities, doing work for us, doing work for all of us. And it's just, it's expanded all during your leadership, Ronnie. So it's, it's time we get to hear from the man, from the honoree for the class of 2021, our friend, our leader, and I'm proud to bring him on, Ronnie Wong. of the marathon swimming. Uh, my name is Ronnie Wong, I'm from Hong Kong. Uh, today I'm very pleased to be here to uh, uh, say my feeling about uh, uh, being uh, nominated and accepted to the International Marathon Hall of Fame. Um, first of all, I would like to uh, thank uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Sid Cassidy, uh, my introducer. Uh, Sid, I, I, I think all of you know that he's from the States. The first time I know him, maybe around 20 odd years ago, when I uh, uh, represented FINA uh, to go to uh, the United States to visit uh, the, the, the marathon swimming. So um, at that time he was still the, uh, uh, a coach. And not long after that, then he also joined the uh, FINA, the marathon swimming uh, committee. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy to work with him together 
for a long time. And then we are also very proud of uh, 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 fighting for the, the marathon swimming uh, to be uh, uh, included in the Olympic event. So I think the first uh, Olympic uh, 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 marathon swimming event was held in 2008 in uh, Beijing. So we work very hard and then we work uh, sometimes until after midnight. So I think uh, uh, Sid is a very, very dedicated uh, 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 official. So I learned a lot from him. So also I would like to thank my family because without my family support and also my uh, boss, my company's boss support, because as, I, as you know, the marathon swimming uh, is uh, you know organized in many many places in all five continents. I have to do a lot of traveling. So without the consent, uh, without the support, I won't be able to uh, attend that many uh, uh, competitions. So I, uh, in that respect, I'm very grateful of them. So uh, I, 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 well, I'm thinking of uh, um, continuing to uh, contribute to the sports of marathon swimming because personally, I think uh, marathon swimming is one of the most uh, uh, environmental friendly spots. You don't need anything, you just need a swimming tr not a trunk to jump into the, uh, the, the water. That's about it. So, um, and this particularly, uh, uh, marathon swimming can be swim anywhere that has, uh, you know, uh, 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 water. You don't need to go into a, a swimming pool. A swimming pool, you need to have a chlorine, you don't need to have a, a, a filtration system, which is, I think, still uh, not as uh, uh, environmental friendly. So anyway, I will continue my full support and dedicate myself to uh, promote the, 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 the sports of swimming. I'm looking forward to see you all in the future. Hi there, I'm Kevin Murphy, holder of the male record for the most number of English Channel swims and the King of the North Channel Award with three crossings. I'm an honour swimmer in the International Swimming Hall of Fame Class of 2010 and the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame Class of 1971. <laughs> 50 years ago, where's it all gone? Way back then, we would have been astonished at the way our sport has developed and become so popular. Back in 1968, I was one of only four channel swimmers that year. In fact, I thought it was six, but the records tell me it's only four. Now there are hundreds and the success rate has improved dramatically. And that's largely due to people like the person I have the privilege and the honour of introducing today. Colin Hill has been an inspiration to so many, and not just an inspiration. He organises, he encourages, he coaches, and he's there on a boat in support of swimmers. And of course, he's a swimmer himself, with a string of achievements, including the English Channel in 10 and a half hours in 2009, and winner of the Madeira 25K event. Since 2008, he has facilitated nearly 175,000 swimmers to dip a toe into cold water, long distance events and marathon swimming. 
Uh, yes, I did say 175,000. He's receiving the Irving David Captain Roger Wheeler Memorial Award, which recognises his contribution to the administration of open water swimming across the world. And there can be no finer recipient of this award. Let me add a little bit of detail. Colin has been a swim organiser for 17 years, including the last 10 years as a marathon swim organiser. He was the technical manager for the London Olympics open water swimming in 2012. In fact, I asked him for a job in 2012. I didn't get it, but I won't hold that against him. He's officiated at European Championships, FINA World Championships and Grand Prix events. Since 2014, he's been a FINA open water swimming consultant covering around eight events a year in 10 different countries. And many International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame honorees have been helped by taking part in events Colin has organised. As FINA open water swimming consultant, Colin's role was initially to set up mass participation events alongside elite races. He's now become a FINA open water swimming correspondent, providing social media for all the elite races. Oceans, channels, lakes or rivers. If swimmers want to do them, Colin can help. Since 2004, iconic swims in England's Lake District have been his special forte, including Lake Windermere, Oldswater and Coniston, escorting solo swimmers and organising new events. In 2008, Colin set up the first truly mass participation open water swim in Britain, the Great North Swim, which peaked uh, 10,000 swimmers in one weekend and turned into a series of events. He created Chill Swim and made it happen for 750 swimmers a year in Lake Coniston. And in 2016, he was asked by London Marathon Events to be the swim director for the annual Swim Serpentine in London's Hyde Park. Covid has of course put a pause on these events, but they and Colin will be back. I started by saying that there can be no finer recipient of the Irving David Captain Roger Wheeler Memorial Award. I now welcome Colin Hill. Thank you very much to Kevin Murphy one of the legends in channel swimming. That really means a lot to me, Kevin. I really appreciate it. And thank you to Melissa Roberts. I know you spent a lot of time collecting all those photographs and doing all the editing, and it's really emotional watching that. So thank you very much. I'd like to congratulate all the other recipients tonight, uh, those who have been inducted into the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame. And of course, I would like to thank the International Swimming Hall of Fame for this really amazing and humbling award. It means so much to me. This is about uh, contributing to open water swimming. And I like to think that my passion and love for the sport has sort of shone through in the events I've organized and when I've been promoting the sport of marathon swimming and open water swimming. So I can't say how much this means to me. It's, uh, it, it's wonderful and really is a pinnacle for everything that I've been doing so far. I'd like to thank a few people as well, who along the way really helped or inspired me. Uh, first of all, Brendan Foster from The Great Run Company. Brendan's a former Olympic runner. And when I pitched this idea of doing this mass swim, Brendan supported me and thought it could work when a lot of people didn't. And so thank you, Brendan, for that. At the time I was organizing uh, mass participation running events and also international elite running races, like cross-country events which are live on BBC and putting the track down the centre of Manchester so that Usain Bolt could run down. And that's really where I, I got to understand that sport is a stage. It's about promoting the sport and you want to show the sport off in the best possible way and that's what I love to do. So Charlotte O'Neill, who was head of the aquatics team at London 2012 for LOCOG, she approached me and she knew my passion for the sport and she knew also that I worked with TV companies in promoting these sports events. And so she asked me to be the technical operations manager for the marathon swim events, which was, again, that was absolutely incredible and great to be part of. And I really feel there that we, we showed marathon swimming how exciting it can be. Uh, Dennis Miller, who was my technical uh, liaison from FINA at the time, 
um, sadly missed. And Dennis was a real important part of that 2012 event. I'd like to thank FINA as well. Since after the 2012 event, FINA asked me to become their open water swimming consultants. And I've been to most of the Marathon Swim World Series events since then. And it's been great to be a part of promoting those, those events. And I think for a while, some of the technical officials wondered why I was wandering around with a camera all the time, my video equipments. But it's been great to help promote the sport. It's so exciting, those races. And to be part of that world circuit was great fun. And thank you to all the elites who were very generous with their time when I was asking them questions on the finish line. It's been great to put that onto YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and really help promote that sport. So thank you. Um, also, Stephen Monotones. I first met Stephen over in LA. He invited, invited me across there to talk about what I've done with Great Swim and also the Olympics. And it just helped put it into perspective just how incredible the sport is globally. So thank you, Stephen. Um, another place hotel where I'm currently based, I operate from, and I've got my own swimming coaching company where I take people new to the sport into the water and also those doing length of lakes and marathon swims. So they've helped me sort of um, have this great location here at the Lake Dist English Lake District next to Allswater. Um, this is where I live and I love to be here. It's a great place to be based for swimming. So thank you to everybody uh, who's watching tonight and everyone who's helped out in the sport of open water swimming. I'm really proud to be involved in the sport and I look forward to doing more and I look forward to working with you all at some point and swimming with you all at some point. Thank you. from Bulgaria and I am Honor Swimmer Class 2008 in the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame, Honor Open Water Swimmer Class 2018 in International Swimming Hall of Fame and received the Poseidon Award 2020. It's my honor to introduce Sarah Thomas from the United States of America to receive the Poseidon Award. The Poseidon Award from International Swimming Hall of Fame recognizes the high level of achievement from a personal effort or initiative in a field of endeavor that contribute to the performance of marathon swimmers, to the development and status of marathon swimming to the world. The winner is decided by the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame selectors. Sara has been the leading long distance marathon swimmer in our sport for the last years. Let me give you the highlights of her career and she's still going strong. 2012, Triple Crown. 2013, the first person to complete double crossing of Lake Tahoe, 42 miles, and Lake Memphremagog, 50 miles. 2015, Loch Ness. 2016, 80 miles Lake Powell, Arizona, United States. Swam in 56 hours and 5 minutes. That's more than two days of swimming. According to the previous list of published by the Daily News of Open Water Swimming, it is the longest distance ever lake swam, surprising those by other International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame honorees. Vicky K, 104 kilometers, double crossing of Lake Ontario in 1987, and Adele Latif Abu Hayf, Ted Erickson, 60 miles, Lake Michigan in 1963. Sarah Swim has also the 13th longest swim ever in terms of time, according to Open Waterpedia. 2017, 168 kilometers in Lake Champlain swim. This took 67 hours and 16 minutes, put her on the seventh position in the list of the longest swim ever in terms of time. In 2019, Cook Strait. 2019, 
she also completed an unprecedented four-way crossing of the English Channel. Sarah's 2016 and 2017 swims were covered by the Associate Press, ESPN, the New York Times and Associate Press, Swimming World, the Triathlete Forum, and another more than 50 media outlets. Those swims explain the horizon of the sport of marathon swimming. Her more recent swims come after a battle with breast cancer. She was open and honest about her battle and the success were even more amazing and inspirational. A four-way English Channel crossing. Wow. I did uh, two single crossing and that was enough for me. In addition to her classy media work, Sarah has also organized annual swims and holds a leadership position with the Marathon Swimming Federation. Her high performance in the water is further enhanced by her administration work to advance the sport. There is no other more worthy and I now present Sarah Thomas from the United States to receive the Poseidon Award. Congratulations. Thank you, Peter, for that very wonderful introduction. It's such an honor to be introduced by you. While we have never met, we have done a few of the same swims, except you just do them a lot faster. I have to admit, I was surprised to receive this award, and I'm very honored to share it with those who have earned it before me. In marathon swimming, it feels like we're always building off of each other, pulling inspiration from those who have come before us. So it truly is an honor and very humbling to share this recognition with the giants of marathon swimming who have earned it before, Pedar, Michael Reed, Chris Goodson, Steve Monotonis, and Chloe McCardle. I swim because I love the water. I love the challenge of pitting myself against the elements and taking myself as close as I can to the edge of what is possible. I once very foolishly said that I could live without swimming, that I could give it up and still be happy. However, when I was diagnosed with cancer and had to take some time away, I learned that I really do need the water in order to feel complete and happy. When I first learned to swim and immediately started to beg my parents to let me be on a swim team, I never imagined where the sport might take me. I feel incredibly blessed to have found lifelong friendships and to have been able to travel the world, all because I love to swim. The sport has changed and enriched my life more than I can ever express. When I set out to swim the English Channel four-way, I had no idea the impact that my swim would have. I was simply focused on being one year out of cancer treatments, and I knew that there was a big if on whether or not I would succeed. But when I hit the dark, hard hours on the swim, I was able to pull strength from this amazing marathon swimming community, people who have believed in me even when I didn't believe in myself. There's strength in numbers, and I definitely feel that when I'm on my long swims. When you see images of marathon swims, you see a solo swimmer cast against a large and unforgiving ocean. Yes, it is lonely sometimes when you're struggling against the elements, but the truth is, no marathon swim is possible without an amazing team behind the swimmer. The four-way success was only possible because I had the most fabulous group of people by my side the entire way. I want to thank each of them for their contributions and to make sure that they know that they all share in this award with me. First, I want to thank my boat captains, Captain Eddie Spelling and his co-pilots, Rob Thompson and Mike Spelling. They were the three best supporters I could have ever had. If they hadn't believed in me and in this swim, we never would have even left the harbor. They looked after me and guided me on a perfect route from England to France, to England, back to France, and then back to England again. They made my job easier. All I had to do was to put my trust in them and keep swimming, and I knew that we would make it together. Next to my support team, Carl Kingery, Elaine Howley, and Craig Lenning, my mom, Becky, and my husband, Ryan. Carl, Elaine, and Craig were devoted to pace swimming me through two very long nights. 
probably swimming more than they had actually anticipated being in the water. Without their support, or with their support, I was able to face the night with confidence, knowing that I wasn't alone. Then to my mother. She gets horribly seasick, yet she still wants to come along on all of my swim adventures so that she can cheer me and scream herself hoarse, giving of her energy and her love while I swim. It's definitely something that I can feel and feed on in each of my swims. And I'm very blessed that she is willing to sacrifice hours of nausea so that she can support me. My mom was the one who signed me up for the swim team, drove me to practices and swim meets, and has supported me unconditionally for my entire life. We should all be so lucky to have a mom like her. And finally for Ryan, thank you for sacrificing and supporting me, not just on swims, but in life. It's hard to be married to me and to dedicate hours of training and sacrificing your free time so that I can get done what I need to do. I know that I couldn't do this with your absolute belief in what I'm doing. I'm glad that you think it's fun or else we wouldn't be here now. So thank you for loving me and supporting me and agreeing to scrub Desident off of my back for the rest of our lives. And then finally, I want to thank the Marathon Swim community and everyone watching this presentation. This sport is made up, is made up of some incredible people and I'm so proud to be part of it. Thank you all for this award and allowing me to represent us. Good afternoon fellow marathon swimmers and all enthusiasts of our noble art. My name is Chris Stockdale and I was privileged to be inducted into Imshoff as an honour swimmer in 1992. I'm honoured to present the 2021 Dale Petronich Award for services to the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame. An honour given to an individual who has dedicated their life to the promotion, development and administration of the sport of marathon swimming. Dale Petranich was the first recipient of this award, the ultimate honour in the marathon swimming universe. This year, the Dale Petranich Award is awarded posthumously to Commander Gerald Forsberg, OBE, known to us all as Jerry. He was the finest, most gentle, wise and exemplary friend and his passing at the age of 88 on the 24th of October 2000 has left the swimming community considerably diminished. Jerry was born in June 1912, shortly after the tragic demise of the Titanic and in his lifetime he swam many thousands more miles than was accomplished by that unsinkable 46,000 tonnes of steel. He was a veritable titan of the seas and his short stature, rotund, aldermanic physique, sparkle in his eyes and infectious chuckle gave little hint that he was one of the greatest athletes the world has ever seen. Jerry became a commander of destroyers in the Royal Navy and served with great distinction and bravery in World War II. In 1954, Lord Mountbatten of Burma told him to go and find the BOAC comet, which had sunk off the Isle of Elba. He did just that. Jerry swam his first race in 1923, but his pioneering marathon swimming career began in 1949 and ended in excess of 200 events later in Watermead Lake in 1996. Not a bad run, all told, he said. Jerry's own words describe his record-breaking channel swim of 1957. The night before my swim, I went to a pub and drank a few pints of light ale. I slept well, rose early, had a good fried breakfast and read the times. I was confident. After all, in the first few months of 1957, and wait for this, I had swum 729 miles. These few lines are an exemplar of halcyon days 
and lauded heroes. Amongst a plethora of administrative roles and honours at home and abroad, he was an executive selector for Imshoff for 26 years. He was a prodigious, though reluctant, author who wrote five books and in 40 years contributed in excess of a half a million insightful words to the Swimming Times. The list of plaudits is simply exhaustive, but I will always remember him for his frank honesty and kindness. He was such a wise mentor. Should I try Loch Lomond, Jerry? I said. No, he replied. Far too cold for you. Try a double Windermere. A piece of cake on a nice July day. I last saw Jerry after an arduous Lake Windermere swim in September 2000. After staggering ashore, I gave him a bottle of his favourite tipple, famous grouse. I had secreted it in my swim bag. Though very frail, he was still there, encouraging every swimmer. I would never see him again. If he was here now, he would be sitting at his desk, imbibing the matchless view of Morecambe Bay, a half corona in one hand, a tot of famous grouse in the other, and he would possibly say, Thank you, and bye, everybody. It's been a great life, and I didn't weaken. Yours I, Jerry. My dearest friend, we all salute you. Thank you, Dr. Chris Stockdale, for so eloquently introducing my father, Commander Gerald Forsberg. Known to many of you as Jerry, the posthumous 2021 Dale Petronek Award was a big surprise to us. Without doubt, my father would have received the award with enormous personal pride. As was his way, there would have been little public show of this pride. Even to family members, the award would have been mentioned in passing and it would have been mixed in with some other family or local news. As his children, my sister and I are honoured to receive this award on his behalf. His grandchildren too are aware of his passion for marathon and long distance swimming. Thinking back to those times, it was an even's chance that by passing any body of water on a trip, it would result in him commenting on its swimming qualities. If on holiday, it was also an even's chance that it would result in a swim. As such, all of us are immensely proud and pleasantly surprised by this award. It has given us a chance to think back and remember. It's humbling to witness the great respect Jerry is still held in by your community today. As family, it was difficult to follow in the footsteps of such success. But one of the questions put to me was, what is the importance of marathon swimming in our lives? It's an important question to answer because there are cohorts of family and supporters behind every swimmer. My sister and I learned the benefit and success that came from Jerry's dedication and hard work. We also learned from our mother how to put up with hard, hard luck and unrewarded efforts. They were both hugely influential on their children and grandchildren's efforts. We learned from marathon swimming I think I know why my father recommended Chris to swim Windermere on a late July day. It's nothing to do really with the water being warm because it would have been warmer in August. However, the lake would be relatively free of the exhaust fumes generated by pleasure craft in August. That's more important in my mind. And who in their right mind would aim more than 90 degrees off course at the start of a long distance swim? A competitor in the Morecambe Cross Bay swim would. That swim knowledge, eventually repeated 29 times by Jerry, gave me a head start in my career as a ship's navigator and hydrographic surveyor. The family, expanded immensely since his passing, has several times raised another question. Why now? The answer is something close to these words. If you are constant in your efforts, you will be successful. If in being successful, you choose to knowledgeably and constructively advise others, then you will be valued. And if you are valued, 
then you may be recognised for it. This outstanding award involves all of that. We all thank you for the recognition you gave him with the 2021 Dale Petronek Award. Thank you. Thank you for joining us and being part of the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame's second ever virtual induction and award ceremonies. We hope that all future ceremonies will be in person as the world continues to make progress against COVID. My name is Ned Dennison, IMSHOF Honour Administrator, Ireland 2012, Chairperson of the Executive Committee, and I'll close the session. Well done and congratulations to the Class of 2021 inductees and award winners. Let me thank others who made this evening possible. IMSHOF Executive Committee members, Melissa Cunningham for creating this video, Richard Bureau for the booklet creation, Beth Udevin for managing creation, shipment of certifications, sashes, and awards. Those of you who nominated, Long Swim Database, Open Waterpedia, and English Channel Swim's database as initial sources of records. Inductees, award winners, introducers, honorees from earlier classes, IMSHOF support, especially Laurie, and finally, honoree and wowza Steve Munitonis who hosted these two Zoom sessions. Please refer to our website, imshof.org, to dive into the history of the sport, including honoree biographies, the booklet for tonight's event, and in a few days or so, this video on YouTube. If you want to be added to our mailing list or connect with an honoree, just ask and we'll forward your request. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. In November, Imshof and Ishof will announce the Class of 2022 inductees and award winners. We'll hold our next in-person ceremony on Saturday, 7th of May, 2022 in Naples, Italy. We hope to see many of you there. Goodbye. Three, two, one. Here we go.